In developing policies and programs, federal officials need to integrate their constitutional and statutory underpinnings, and they need research and evidence on how the eventual program will perform and what work might have already occurred at another agency. For how agencies can best do all of this, Federal News Network's Eric White spoke with Beth Martin, a digital services expert with the Office of Personnel Management, and with Basil White, a senior informaticist with the USDA's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service. Basil White talks first about a network approach to programs and performance. The Integrated Value Network, or IVN, it's a schematic of programs, plans, metrics, regulations, and laws based on how they inherit authority from the U.S. Constitution and move each other forward. So for the IT folks, they might know this as a data schema of federal policy with the Constitution as its root node. So flowing down the legislative branch to laws and regulations and policy on that branch, and then down the executive branch to executive orders and policy that supports those orders. So IVN's a new approach to data architecture and policy analysis because we use a neural network to understand and communicate how those laws, regs, policy strategies, metrics, they all deliver business value to each other. And that visual representation looks like a bunch of nodes for each governance document, the arrows that show that movement of business value across them. So the intent of this is to increase situational awareness about the structure and interdependency of policy, improve command and control, discover unknown stakeholders through connections we didn't know, and improve visibility into that supply and demand and interdependency across requirements to deliver results to the citizen. So we're taking this approach to policy research now because uh, two affordances. One is the Evidence-Based Policymaking Act, which requires us to develop evidence-based research so that future policies, you know, emerge from standards of evidence-based practice and also the uh, availability of neural network technology and relational databases, you know, the price and availability of that is, is shifted significantly. Well, you know, it, it probably should be, but the Constitution isn't really referenced as much in our interviews as you would think, especially here at Federal News Network. Beth, what can you tell me about your role in this? Well, I have been collaborating with Basil on this effort before he came to USDA for a number of years. Basil is one of my oldest friends, and I did a detail at, or I'm sorry, a rotation at the performance.gov, at the Performance Improvement Center. I became aware of things like performance measures and metrics, and Basil had initiated this at his former agency, and we caught up over a cup of coffee, and we knocked on a lot of doors. So... In the early stages, I was the cheerleader. And as our efforts knocking on different agency doors, you know, we did proof of concept, we did one-offs. We learned a lot along the way. And now that we have been collaborating with Jason Traquer at uh, USDA Animal Plant Health Inspection Service, my role has more solidified in terms of the overall product, which is the relational database, but looking at it using my lens in user experience, digital experience, customer experience, because yes, we are creating this platform, but no one ever says, wow, you have a really awesome database. What they're interested in is what it can do for them, whether they're a senior leader who needs to make a decision and the information across these different priority areas that we have can help answer those questions or if someone is doing some analysis because there's a, a decision that needs to be made at a lower level in terms of, do we have all of the right people in the room? What are we missing? What What is the universe of what we need to know? We're speaking with Basil White. He's with the USDA Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service. And that you just heard from Beth Martin. She's a digital services expert with the Office of Personnel Management. Basil, you talked a little bit about what this initiative looks to accomplish. What were some of the issues that it was trying to resolve? Were, were you running into roadblocks when it came to, you know, innovative concepts and all the good stuff that you just mentioned? Well, originally it was, it was it's kind of hard to communicate the intent and what it is and how it works. I mean, it's a very different way of understanding, communicating, recording the interactions of policy. So people wondered, well, this, this data is great, but what do we do with it? And so it took a while to you know, create some products that we could show people and then demonstrate that you know, they were understanding, communicating, changing, leveraging policy based on a stronger foundation of evidence. 
So, you know, we, we made some changes. We've informed the creation of new training policies. We've supported updates to strategic plans. My prior agency, we used it for legislative ingest. So when the PACT Act or uh, the omnibus bill comes out, we're trying to figure out which leader needs to be pinned the rose to deliver this. We saved two weeks of work by walking it back to other things that aligned to those changes in the law that they already did. So we gave them an evidence-based method of parsing out responsibilities for new legislation. At that point, it went from people saying, this is neat, what do we do with it, to map all my stuff. Beth, you said your main role was a cheerleader. What was kind of some of the feedback that you got from some of the other senior leaders and you know data analysts that could potentially use this or utilize it? Well, I, I learned how to, to work the system, and those lessons learned, we eventually incorporated into a, a really thorough standard operating procedure. So one of the first things that I was doing was like, I need to learn what, what's in Basil's head, because he was the only one who had created this, along with some of his colleagues at his former agency. But I had to learn this process. And by doing that, it was giving me a picture of what's involved. So it's like, we need to do a brain dump. And once we did that, we were able to start to show people how it's done for those who are interested and how to do the analyses from that effort. And, you know, to speak to your question with the the senior leaders, what they were able to get out of it, for example, when we did these proof of concept, we were making decisions around communications campaign, for example, and could we kill two birds with three or four stones? Could we get more bang for our buck if we combine efforts rather than just do one-offs? We could do a larger comprehensive communications campaign. We could show how, you know, budget requests can be aligned because, you know, two offices might be doing the same work. And so what are they responsible for? How do they stay in their own lane? And how can they justify asking for additional money because they have been asked to take on more work and they don't have the the additional budget. Things like that really show that once you wrap your arms around all of the obligations and requirements, you have a better understanding and can really speak to those things that are important for you. Because one of the things we don't talk about is the work that you do, other people are dependent upon and the work that other people do, you depend on them. So there is a relationship And you can better see that if we have a solid computer network, then we have uptime for the call centers, for example, and then we can provide good services to the citizen. So there there is an interrelationship and that can really be shown in a visualization as well as in the analysis. So Basil, take me, you know, a couple of years from now, maybe if you, it sound, Beth was trying to get inside your head and it sounds like there's a lot of ideas spinning around on where do you see this all going? So there's a few things that I would like to do that I think it can, it's capable of doing now, and then a few things I think it will be capable of doing, being able to do in the future. So one of the things that is, is say you are a government leader, okay? In the scheme of policy, you exist in your department as a nerve cluster of policy that you own and you direct people, money, and things, and a set of policies to which you deliver value. And another set of policies from which you receive value. So it is a way to dynamically depict the role of a leader within their organization. Another thing that we we talk about is, uh, we've had a few examples of this, but not much, is how we can use this to support resource requests. So the anecdote that I heard from one of the leaders I worked for is she went up to her leader And the leaders asked everybody to provide their resource requests. She did for a brand new office and said, these are my resource requests. This is my plan and my concept of operations. And here is how that plan aligns with the priorities of your office, the secretary, the president of the United States, the PACT Act, you know, and so on. And then, and her boss looked around the room and asked her peers, where's your policy? Where's your strategic alignment? How does your stuff deliver on what me and my boss wants? And, you know, then everyone else kind of gave the polar bear salute because they did not have that body of knowledge that, one, explained what they wanted to do and helped create the thing that she wanted to do. Another thing I'd like to take in the future is helping with grants. You know, we put out grants and 
you know, people apply for the grants and they hope the grant fits in what, what we want.